just uh, put a word on our lips. Can we lift our voices and let God know who he is to us? God, we bless you. God, we honor you. God, we magnify you in this place, oh God. There's none like you. There, we not, there was none before you. There will be none behind you, God. You are the only wise and true God. And we lift your name high. We lift your name high on this day, Father God. We lift your name high, God. We call we pour on your presence in this house, oh God. We thank you for waking us up this morning, Father God, for bringing us here safely, Father God, each and every one of us. We thank you for family in this time and season, Father God. We thank you for fellowship. We thank you for all you're doing in preparation for our next level, Father God, this next season that is upon us, Father God. We thank you for it even now, God. And we bless you. We lift your name high. We lift your name high in it all. We lift your name high in it all. We lift your name high in it all. God, you deserve all the glory you deserve. All the praise you deserve. All the honor. And we give it all to you. We bless your name. We bless your name. We give it all to you. We bless your name.
We thank you for just allowing us, Father God, once again, we just celebrate your son, Jesus, that you gave us this gift on this time in this season. So we bless you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Listen, I want to turn to Luke, the second chapter. I want to turn to Luke, the second chapter. And uh, I want to I want to I want to deal with something because one of the things that, that, I, that I believe is that Christ is our example. Jesus the Christ is an example for us. Going to Luke 2. Luke 2. Jesus Christ is an example for us. So we can look to his life to see our life. Yeah. Amen? Amen. We can look to his life to see our life. Yeah. And so as we, as all of, of, of Christianity um, during this time and this season is celebrating the birth of, of our Savior Jesus Christ. I want to I deal with what's in this moment. And, 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 and as we were worshiping, I heard these words all in one. All in one. Listen, in a split second, in the split second that Christ came into the earth, purpose was fulfilled. And I want to say to you, in the split second that you were born, purpose was fulfilled in the earthly realm. Listen, I want you to understand that when we look at Christ, we get to see the most remarkable individual in the history of time. The most remarkable person, the most remarkable event in time. But watch this, all of that was just for you. It was just for you. It was just for you. And I want you to understand that just like he was born and he manifested, I want to look at two scriptures that God expects you to manifest in your life. And you know, I, I usually don't do Christmas theme, you know, holiday theme messages, but I want to try to delve into this just a little bit so that we can see um, some things about our lives, even as we celebrate our Savior. Amen. Look the second chapter. Um, let, let's, let's, let's just begin at verse 8. Let's, let's just read this story in context. Everybody say we're going to read the Christmas story. We're going to read one version, amen. We're going to read the Luke version, amen. Amen. Luke 2, verses 8 through 20. Luke 2, verses 8 through 20. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone around about them, and they were sore afraid. Ah, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings and great joy, which shall be to all people. And this is this verse 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ, who? The Lord. The Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. You shall find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God. Wow, this is awesome. Praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it shall come to pass. Um, um, yeah, as the angel, I'm sorry, and it came to pass rather as the angels were gone away from, he from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go un even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord had made known unto us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary, Joseph, and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child, and all that heard it wondered at those things which were told him by the shepherds. But watch this, but Mary kept all things, all these things, and pondered them in her heart. And all the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things which they had heard and seen, and it was told them. Now, hold that place and turn to Isaiah, the ninth chapter. Isaiah the ninth chapter. And we're going to be ready to rock and roll in just a moment. And I want to go straight to um, uh, yeah, let's go straight. Let's go straight on down um, to verse 9. Familiar passage. Isaiah 9, verse 6. You there? Amen. For unto us a child is what? 
born, unto us a son is given, and he shall, and, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and the increase of his government and peace, and uh, I'm sorry, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it, to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. He will perform this. So I want to I wanna talk. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. You can take your rest for a second. Amen. You know, this, this time of year, and I, I was listening to my, my pastor, Hart Ramsey, online, and we were, we, he was um, giving a, 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 a broadcast, and you know how so many people right now are saying, especially with some of the common movements that we have in spirituality. Now, I want to make a difference between spirituality and Christianity, because there's a lot of spirits out there. You got to watch folk when they talk about their spiritual, because spirits ain't never necessarily Christian. And said again, spiritual and necessarily Christian. And what we got to understand, watch this, is that we, we want to understand this pivotal moment in the life of every believer, though we never experience the moment. We ask, what's in a moment? I have to tell my sons and daughters there's a difference between a minute and a moment. A minute is simply a measure of time, but a moment is a manifestation. Something happens in a moment. And I want to tell you, in this moment, likewise, in the moment that you were born, destiny entered into the earth. And you got to understand something. That just like Christ, as we look at his life, and he had all this purpose on him, and he had all this in one, there's a whole lot of stuff in you that ain't there yet. Right. Amen. We're still waiting on some stuff. Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, manifest. Listen, when we talk about manifestation, it means to lay something open, to make it naked, to open it up to the world. Watch this. And with the birth of Jesus Christ, we see the opening of a whole lot. Now, Luke records this, and he, and he gives us this message. First of all, he says in Luke 2, he says he says to these angels, these heavenly hosts, he, they, they come forth and they begin to talk to the shepherds. And, they, and, they, and watch this in verse 11. Says, Unto us... I'm sorry, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, and which is Christ the Lord. So, so, so he, he gives us different dimensions of who this baby is going to be. Now, here's one of the, the, the great mysteries of the kingdom that I really, really, sometimes you, you, you don't understand things and you just have to trust God. Mm, right. Amen. Mm -hmm. I wonder why a God that is so powerful so big, so amazing, would trust salvation to human beings. Mm -hmm. See, we got to understand, it's a lot in this baby. He, he trusted salvation, the whole redemption plan of man, to a manger in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. he, he trusted salvation and the word of salvation to folk who knew nothing of what they were talking about until they got a revelation. Can I tell you, the many of us in our Christian walk, we do a lot of talking, but we do it without revelation. And until we get the revelation of what's really happening, we're going to miss the impact of the story. This story is so amazing. Now, I, I, I was in, I was in, in my apologetics class. I talk about apologetics right now because there's so much out there arguing against the way, the truth, and the life. So much arguing against who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. And if we get to watch this, and one of the things they attack is this birth, because if I can destroy the birth, I can destroy the resurrection mm -hmm. and the crucifixion. If I can make the Bible have one lie in it, then I can say it's all potentially could be a lie. Mm -hmm. If I could tear just one piece of the story, but this story is so locked in until, watch this, believe it or not, it's going to be true. One thing about truth is, you don't have to believe it. Truth going to be truth whether you believe it or not. And a lie going to be a lie even if you believe it. And so as we talk about this, he says, Luke says, watch this. He says, he says, he says that this, this Savior, the Christ, is going to be born. And the word manifest, and I took you back to the prophetic utterance first, just for a second. Because the world was made manifest when Christ was born into the earth. 
But before then, what was happening? What was being said about this Savior? There are many, many what we call messianic prophecies that talk about who Jesus Christ was and him being born in the earth and all these wonderful stories. And we see one recorded in Isaiah 9. Now watch this. I want to look at Isaiah 9 for a quick second and we're going to be done because I'm ready to eat some church. No, that's the Lord. I'm joking. Quit playing in church. Quit playing in church. But if you can't smile now, you ain't going to never smile. Amen. Listen, this ought to be a day. Everybody say all in one. There's a lot in this moment. There's a lot in this moment. Your eternal salvation is in this moment. Your joy is in this moment. The harvest of the world is in this moment. Everybody asks, what's in a moment? What's in a moment? Everything, everything is in this moment. Everything we believe hinges on the birth of this little baby boy that we call a Savior. We call him Christ. We call him Jesus. We call him our, our, our kinsman redeemer. Everything is in this moment. I love a minute, but a moment is powerful. Can I derail for a second? Do you remember the first time you saw that one you loved? You remember, you remember that moment when they caught your eye? You remember that moment? Bring it in, fellas. Bring it in. Bring it in. Don't go all the way there. I ain't say all the way there, but I'm just talking about the moment. <laughs> I saw some smiles come on faces. But there's a moment, that, that there's a connection, there's a revelation in a moment that can have eternal consequences. This moment was a pivotal point in time that carries E. What's in a moment? It's all in one. Listen, listen. If nobody else had been born in the world as long as he was born, we had a chance. Right. Amen. This little baby. So Isaiah 9 says prophetically, watch this. He's speaking of it. He says, watch this. He says, for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. In manifestation, in this story, in our lives, there is a process of growth. But no growth happens without birth. Mm -hmm. Simple, right? Simple. But Jesus, watch this, in his birth had so much in that moment that had eternal consequences that hell was shaken. You know the story. The Herod sends forth wise men to try to find him so that he could watch, quote unquote, worship this baby. And yet he sends forth a decree to kill every child that's two years old and under. Can I submit this to you? That the enemy tries to kill you early so your ladder can never manifest. Amen. Amen. The attacks on your life have only become have only come because there's something in the moment that you entered into the earth. There's something about you. Just like there's something about this Jesus, there's something about you, and just like there's everything about this Jesus, there's everything about you, and it's called purpose. So there's an eternal consequence that we see in this story. That though we, you know, we we can we can put the babe in the manger and we can do all of those things. It's really, really wonderful, but you gotta understand there's so much more in here that contends with your destiny. Herod sends forth to try to kill him. So, so you gotta understand that the enemy has already set himself. And this is a repeated pattern. You remember when Moses was born? You remember when Moses was born? The midwives had already received a decree from Pharaoh that says, watch this, every child, every male child that breaks the womb bashes brains out at birth. At birth. Kill them at birth. So here's the question. Why did they let you survive? Why are you still here? See, every Christmas you see is an indication that there's more for you to do for the next season. There's more life for you to live. There's more grace on your life. There's more living for you to do. Because purpose is not complete yet. You can't get stuck in the born. you got to get to the given. Watch this. For unto us a child is born, but unto us a son is given. If I say what's in a moment? Everything. 
thing that he needed was in him in the moment he was born. Now, a child is born, watch this, but a son is given. What's the difference between a child and a son? Anybody can kind of get guess? What's, what's a child? Come on. Child is a baby, right? right, right, right. But what's a son? son? Son is your offspring. It belongs to you. But, but watch this. Scripturally, son means there's a certain maturity that's taking place. You can't stay child and never become son. Once in a moment, a demand on you to grow up. Well, well. Okay, let me go. Let me, let me flip it to the end. Luke 2. Luke 2, we just read Luke 2 and we read his birth. But by Luke 2, 52, the Bible says, and Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Where is the increase? Don't stay the baby in the manger. Let's grow. So what's in this moment? What's in this moment? In this moment, watch this. We have a child that's born. A son is given. Watch this. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. He shall be wonderful. Counselor. Watch this. Mighty God. Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. All of this was in one moment. If I can be personal for a minute. I'm going to be personal for a minute. My mother, my mother, our mama, um, <laughs> Robin, the girl, Robin. I told the story before. My mother, my mother, my mother, my mother promised my father he'd give her, she'd give him one child. Because when my, when my, when, 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 when our mom met my dad, because we have different fathers, but when our mom met my dad, she had children already, but she promised that I'd give you one child. Now here, 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 here's the course of life. She made a promise, but the child before me, Marche, didn't live. She died after a couple of days in the hospital, right? Yes, sir. Tell the story correctly. That's my big brother. He knows the story. So she passes away. And I remember when I got my call to ministry. This is why I take preaching seriously. I said to my mom, you know, I'm fighting with God on some stuff. I think he's calling me to preach. She got my wife. She said, well, son, if that's what God wants you to do, that's what you're going to have to do. And I remember coming home to Mobile to preach it, sit on the bed, talk to my mama, went to the church, went to talk to my pastor at 17 here at Chester Street, preach it out of And I told him, Pastor, I feel this, this call. This, this, I feel like God's calling me to preach. And we talked through that. And then in a subsequent phone call, a couple days later, I was talking to my mom. My mom says to me, she says, you know what? I know why. Now, Marche had to die. Mm. I said, huh? She said, I know why she had to die. She says, because if she had lived, you'd have never been born. Mm. Right. She said, I promised your daddy one child. Mm -hmm. And if she had lived, you'd have never been born. And he wanted to get born. Mm. What about your destiny? There's no birth in earth like that. In that moment, he secured everything for everybody oh. in the entire world. He secured, watch this, opportunity for salvation even if you don't take it. Mm. Thank you. Mm. The watch this. Oh, God. I know it's going to be controversial and it may upset some people, but I don't mind it. It'll be okay. I love them anyway. I love you anyway. He died to give opportunity for salvation to Satanists. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. Come on now. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. He died to give opportunity for salvation to Rastafarians, Rastafarians, Confucianists, Buddhists. He died to give opportunity for salvation. Mm -hmm. But what about the baby? Mm -hmm. What you going to do about Jesus? Because in essence, watch this, until you embrace the revelation of the baby, you can have no salvation. What's in a moment? There's a lot in the moment. And in this moment, what we got to understand is, watch this, we don't need religion, we need a revelation of who Jesus is. I don't care if you sing hymns, if you sing praise and worship, I don't care if you got a lead guitar, you got a bass, it don't matter, none of that stuff matters. The question is, do you know the baby? Do you understand who Jesus is to you? Do you understand that without his birth, you would have no rebirth? Do you know the baby? See, 
the shepherds were on that hill. And they had to get a revelation first. Now, once they got a revelation, they began to talk revelation. Yes, sir. They got a revelation of what Isaiah had prophesied, what was in that moment. There was a lot in that moment. If I say all in one, all everything we needed was in his birth. Everything you needed was in his birth. So Isaiah tells the story along with Matthew, Mark, oh, excuse me, I'm hot. Along with Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, the, the Gospels tell the story. And they talk about this birth, this birth, this Jesus. Now Matthew takes an interesting approach to it because Matthew, watch this, when Matthew deals with it, Matthew deals with it. Um, let's go to Matthew 1 just for a second. Matthew deals with it from, from, the, from, from, from two perspectives. Matthew 1, um, well, I tell you what, let's go to Matthew 1 and then Matthew 2. Make a note of Matthew 1, then let's go to Matthew 2. Make a note, Bible notes, so take, make, a, make a note, watch this. Matthew 2, we're going to read from Matthew 2, verse 1 and 8. Let's read, let's read Matthew's context. Because in, 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 in Luke's context, he mentions him as Savior and as Christ. Now, I've taught you before what's in this moment. I've taught you before that you got to know them names. You got to understand the revelation of what those names is. When we talk about a Savior, we, we, listen, he was born ready for the cross. He was born ready to die. Okay, I know this don't sound like a normal Christmas message, but you got to hear me. He was born with the purpose of dying. There can't be no redemption unless he was born to die. As a matter of fact, Revelation 7 says he was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. So he came in knowing my blood is going to be the ultimate sacrifice. Yes, sir. I wonder, let me ask you this question. I wonder if, if, if the Lord, <laughs> can, I, Zab, can I pick on you for a minute? Zab, we were talking yesterday. We were pretending. Thank God bless you, Lord. Uh, we had a great time in fellowship yesterday. We were just talking to Zab yesterday. Zab in the hand, but how many accidents in, in the, three? Three accidents in the last month. Okay, three accidents in a month. That's a long month. <laughs> that's a lot of, that's a whole lot of money. What if God had told you on day one, okay, this month you're going to have three accidents, you probably would not have gone, you probably wouldn't have driven that much. You probably would have, watch this, you probably, you probably, <laughs> come on, Zyla. you probably would have stayed in the house and not got behind the wheel of a car if you knew Three accidents were waiting on me this month. Come on, come on, come on. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. I know you're talking about what happened. Why, why are we talking about accidents? If God had told you this month, watch this, that this month you're going to lose two friends to foolishness. If God had told you this month that your boss is going to walk in and tell you your job is over this month. You might not have wanted to live that month, but he was born with the revelation that he was going to have to die. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Born with the revelation that, if, that, that nobody else's blood will do but mine. Mm -hmm. Everybody said, all in a moment. Oh. There was a lot in that moment. There was so much in that moment. He was, watch this, he was born knowing he had to die. Mm -hmm. For this boy, for me. Matthew says it like this. Watch this. Watch this. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born? Mm -hmm. Now, wait a minute. Do you know what they just called him? He's born. King of the Jews. Wait a minute. How does he have royal authority on him? And he ain't even. Everybody say this. Look at him. Look at me. You got some things on you that you don't even realize yet. You were, you were born into it because God had ordained it for your life. And we got to start to live like we're there. He says, he says, where, where, this is one that is born king of the Jews. Born a savior. Born the Christ. 
born the ultimate sacrifice. So let me ask this question. Maybe some of the things that's happening in your life, you were born for them, but you just ain't ready for them. Amen. Maybe, watch this, maybe watch this, oh God, maybe those parents you don't like were only instruments to get you here. Because the destiny on you is greater. They just need to be used in the process. Yes, sir. Amen. Maybe what you're bringing into the earth is going to be greater than you. Amen. He was born. He, but we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Then Herod the king had heard these things and he was troubled. And all Jerusalem with him and went, watch this, <laughs> Wow, it's so much in the moment. It's too much in the moment. I can't talk about everything that's in the moment, but it's a lot in the moment. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes together, he demanded of them which, which the, of, of them which Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem, or where Christ should be, they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea. And thus it was written by the prophet, And, and, and thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, art not the least among the princes of Judea. For out of thee shall come a governor. Now, remember, we talked about the governor in Isaiah 9, right? Mm -hmm. So he was prophesied to have the government upon his shoulder, but then he manifests the government in the Gospels. Mm -hmm. And he shall rule my people Israel. Mm -hmm. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently that the time, what time the star appeared, and he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when ye have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. Amen. I noticed that, now watch this, that, that doesn't sound like a bad thing, but there's a whole lot of deception in that. Right. I ain't going down that road, but I could really camp out right there for a minute. It's a lot of stuff that sound like good things, but it's a whole lot of deception in that. Right, Here it says, watch this, if this person manifests the kingship and authority that's on his life, it's going to be to my destruction. There are some things that are unavoidable in earth. And what God has put on your life, you can't avoid it. And you can't be mad when folk be mad because what he put on you manifests. Amen. Okay. Well, amen. You can't be mad when they get mad about what he puts on you manifesto. Let me say it one more time. Let me say it like this. You have inherent hate that's going to come to your life. You can't help that part because you were born with a whole lot in that heart. I'm coming to a close. I'm almost done. I just need you to understand today that watch this, that Jesus Christ's birth, his whole birth, is a picture of what God wants to do in your life. It's a picture of what God wants to do in your life. And so Herod then, watch this, he sends forth this message. He says, listen, I want, I want you to go find him so I can worship. But the worship was, the, the declaration of worship was the deceitfulness of the decree that was about to come against the child. You're born with destiny. But you're also born with warfare. It's going to happen. It's all a part of the process. So don't give up in this season. Watch this. In this season, come to me, Isaac. In this season, watch this. This season is about time to moments together. Mm. It's about something that's bigger than us. And the birth of this Christ, this Savior, this ruler, this King, it was a whole lot in that moment. And I want to leave you with this exhortation as you go through the next, the rest of these next day, next few days. Don't get caught up on minutes, but let's pack our moments with special times. Some of us lost someone this year. They died. My pastor gives a great suggestion. He says, how about you make a memorial this Christmas instead of mourning? Turn 
talk about the good times. Celebrate the wonderful times. Let's maximize the moments because moments have so much in them. And the moment that this baby was born, the moment that he came into the earth, we see a process by which time starts ticking on his life, but manifestation keeps right on coming. Can I say this to you? I don't want your life to be full of just ticking on the clock. I want your life to manifest something. For unto us a child is born, but unto us a son is given, and then all this purpose starts to roll out of him. Prince of Peace, Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, all of that begins to roll out of his life because of one moment of birth. If you're alive today, and I know you're sitting in this room, you're alive, then you got a whole lot more living to do. There's a purpose on your life that God wants to manifest. And as we look to Christ as the example, watch this. He went through, so we got to go through. He had a tax, so we don't have a tax. He had demonic decrees against him, so we're going to have the same demonic decrees against us. But you know what we got to realize? Nothing stopped the baby. Can I encourage you on this? When, when, when they sent forth and they want to kill him, the angels had, they moved him to Egypt. They, they moved him from Bethlehem to Egypt. When they, when they came looking for him to destroy his life, God hid him in a foreign land. Sometimes God will put you in a place where you think you don't fit because you don't fit. He just covered you for a season. He just hide you for a season because he knew if you had stayed what you were in, and the destruction was coming, but he hid you away. I was talking to a brother yesterday and he's going through some things. He's like, he's like, Pastor, I got to get myself back on track. I'm like, you're on track. But I ain't in church, but you're on track. You don't understand that. Some of some, some our religious folks understand that. You, you ain't, I ain't in church, but you're on track. Well, I'm in prison, but you're on track. All right, sir. If it let you stay out, you'd have died. Because right, the games you was running on folks will get you killed. So he set you in a prison cell, a five by eight, just to give you time to slow yourself down. Your process and everything you've got to go through is about manifesting that destiny. But it all happens in one moment. When you were born into this earth, just as Christ was, everything is already set. You just got to walk it out. He said, why do I have to wrestle with this depression? Why do I have to wrestle with these things? Why do I not like who I am? Why do I deal with these things? It's all a part of your process. But you will manifest. You will manifest. Jesus, this baby boy, he grew. There was times when they had to run with him to save him. You see, you don't think about those things. There was times when Jesus was on the run from folk. There, there was times when men desired to kill him. Yes, no Jesus. And Jesus said some words to us. He says that they hated the master. How much more than he going to hate the servants? Now that sounds really, really hard, but listen, it's a reality that takes away the shock value in life. Don't be shocked when folk don't like you. Don't be shocked when things go wrong. It's all part of your process of manifesting the moment you came into the earth. You got to go through people of God. That's going to do it. But thank God that we've got an example in Jesus the Christ. The Bible says he learned obedience even unto the death of the cross. And you know what? Because he had a cross, he gave you a cross. He's a wonderful God. So I close with Isaiah. And I ask the question, what's in a name? 
What's in the wonderful? What's in the counselor? What's in the mighty God? What's in the Prince of Peace? What's, what's in your name? What challenges must you face? What challenges must you face to become all God wants you to be? What you got to run from? What you got to war with? What you, what you got to go through to manifest everything that is Christ on your life? Throughout yesterday, I was reminded, because it reminded me about the time we were preaching and we, we had some olives and began to crush. Some of you remember that sermon. We had some olives and we rubbed those olives in our hands. Remember that? And we rubbed those olives and the only way we got the oil out was we had to destroy the olive. We had to destroy the olive. We had to destroy the olive. We had to destroy the olive, but the oil came out. This baby boy, this baby boy, born in that moment, all in one, everything was right there. And I want to tell you today that if you got breath in your body, there's more to come. Look at your name and tell them there's more to come. We had heard the end of this story. We hadn't heard the end of your story. I know it's difficult, but we hadn't heard the end of your story. Let's pray for a moment. Father, I don't even feel like I've done your word justice today. But I do know this, Father. That everything you said about this boy Jesus, him being the wonderful, the counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Everything you put on him in that moment, everything that was born into the earth, every manifestation that the earth needed, he manifested and there's still more to come. Jesus, I speak this over your children that, that we're manifesting, but there's more to come. There's more to come. That this isn't the end of the story, that that maybe some are straight away, maybe some are in, in Egypt, maybe some are in a dark place, maybe some are out of place, maybe some, but there's more to the story. It isn't over, God. It is not over. God, we may have our Herods and we may have our Pharaohs and we may have our Jews. We may have all those who've been opposed in one form or another, but God, destiny still awaits. We manifest you. Thank you for the birth of this Savior, this great gift you gave us. The gift that you gave that keeps on giving. So God, teach us to treat every day as Christmas. And while we give natural gifts to men, Father God calls us to give the spiritual gift of grace, of Christ to all we encounter. It calls us to give Christ by example to all we encounter so they may experience this great grace that rests on our lives, a grace that gets us over our Herods and over our pilots and over our, our pharaohs and over, over everything. This grace, this grace, Father God, that keeps us. God, we declare increase over every life in this room that the increase be in sonship that they continue to grow and to manifest everything you purpose for their lives, God. Help us to know, Father God, it's not where we started, but it's where we're going to finish. Thank you for this baby, Father God, that started in a manger, in a trough, and walked the earth, and yet from Bethlehem he had to see Calvary. He had to see Calvary in that he had to go to a place called the Skull to go to Gotha and die for us. But Father, that wasn't the end of the story. You got it up. But resurrection power. Resurrection power. And he's our soon returning king. He's coming again, Father. And that's still not the end of the story, Father. Because even after he comes, he's going to 
He's going to rescue us from this earthly existence. He's going to take us out of this terrestrial existence. This babe that became a man that gave his life that was a resurrected Savior is our soon coming King. But God, he'll be still there making intercession for us. Standing in the gap, Father. So God, as his story continues, allow our story to continue. Rewrite some of the pages, Father God. Redeem the times. We bless you. We thank you for it now. God, we thank you for our Savior's birth and likewise for our own. That you let us live. You purposed that we would live. So God, with every spirit that may war against us in this season, every, every depression, every seasonal affective disorder, everything that may, that may try to depress us in this season, we take it captive. We take authority over it yeah. by your Holy Spirit. cry holy 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 we declare the joy to the world we declare it Father Lord God we thank you thank you for the birth of your son thank you for our birth oh we magnify you you're wonderful wonderful Let the spirits, let the hearts draw us near. conviction upon our hearts now that, that no matter what Father God where we are in life that we come to a revelation a realization of who the Savior is who this, this baby boy Jesus really was that he was our Savior he is our Christ the anointed one his anointing help us to see him in the beauty of his holiness and for Lord God allow the world to see him in and on us Lord, we magnify you. We give you honor. If you're here today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, we'd love to extend the opportunity to you because he died for you. He's already given his life for you. He's already paid the price for you.